So if anybody, anybody would like to volunteer or I can go first, either way. Okay, KP, yes, please go ahead. I dance professionally, my folk dance, Bhangra. Every morning, I walk on grass, hug the trees, touch the flowers. My kid was born on an Easter Sunday in Germany. I would say the first one is the I. That's my vote. My vote goes to the first one. Okay, Joe, Joe votes for third. Second, okay. Okay, two votes for third statement. Hi, Mary. Oh, there's a tie between the second and the third statement. Okay. Should I tell it? Uh, Matty, would you like to vote or? Okay, second. Ah, three <laughs> votes for second statement. So it's the first one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You got a KP, yeah. <laughs> I do dance, but not professionally. <laughs> Matty, would you like to uh, introduce us with your name and action so that we can, all of us can say hi to you? Sure. Um, I, uh, I don't know which action to receive and replicate of I think I've forgotten. <laughs> it's okay. You, you, you have to introduce your own self with an action and we'll just repeat the action and say hi. Sure. Okay. Um, let us see. Um, hello, I am Maddie. Um, hi, Maddie. Hi, Maddie. <laughs> this is my action and attempt to wake up because it, this is very early in the US right now. Um, but thank you for having me. Hi. Uh, Patrick, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, sorry, I just got here. Sorry for arriving late, but thanks for welcoming me. So I'm Patrick, I'm from Brazil. And now I do a move, right? Yeah. Okay. Hi, Patrick. <laughs> so for Patrick and Matty, we're just playing uh, two truths, one lie. And each of us had thought of uh, three uh, statements and two of them is true and one of them is lie. Everybody has to guess which one is a lie. So we just guessed for uh, Kaval and uh, I'd, I'd like to go next. Okay. So my three statements are, I have been to jail. I have proposed to somebody I used to like, and I have slept in the snow. You have, what is the last one? I have slept in the snow. Like I, I slept in the snow. Second one is. Oh my God, I forgot to mute for the second one. <laughs> you went to the jail. <laughs> First no, one. second one is a proposed, right? Yeah, proposed. first one is I went to jail. I proposed, uh, I have proposed to somebody I used to like. And third one is I have slept in the snow. And then maybe one, sorry. <laughs> okay, third, third, second. Okay. 
should I should I go ahead and because uh, Bandana, should I tell you? Uh, uh -huh. I I knew one of I just have a choice from two because I knew one is true. You don't have to reveal it. <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, second one is the lie i have slept in snow and <laughs> i have been to jail to work with the inmates <laughs> uh, yeah so the second one is the lie any anybody else who would like to go i can go let me look at my list. Um, <clears throat> okay. In high school, I got to act as Tony in West Side Story. Um, I worked for nine years in alternative education in Thailand. And my third one is I'm sitting on the other side of the wall from Zachi. Place your bets. Covered. Okay, I think everyone's pretty much gone. Um, so the lie is the second one. Um, I actually worked in Myanmar for that amount of time. And, oh, there's Zachi. <laughs> We're married. <laughs> this is very interesting because I had this intuition that was telling me that you're playing with some details in the second one. The country might be different or the number of years might vary and still I voted for the first one. It's okay. Okay, I will go then. I will go next. Uh, <clears throat> my three statements are... Uh, I fled my country for security reason. This is one. And second, uh, I am five feet and three inches tall and 110 pounds <laughs> heavy. I don't know how to say it yet. And, and I am pregnant and I expect in the baby gay. So why don't you go first? <laughs> I abstain. Is it all? Okay. I even forget what is my statement. Okay. Uh, the first one is true. Uh, yeah, I feel my country because of the security reason. And second, what is it? I am. Second, I think I am five feet, uh, three inches tall and 110 pounds. That's a lie. <laughs> a little bit, yeah, different. <laughs> but I am yeah, pregnant and having a baby gay.
Wow, I like how everybody's manipulating each other and they're like putting in details which <laughs> might or might not be true. <laughs> Amazing. Who else would like to go? Yes, Patrick. Me. So, uh, I've been <clears throat> in an orphanage in Kenya and it went on fire and we had, we had to rescue the children. Second one. Mm. I met my mother, my biological mother, last year. And she, she lived two kilometers from where I lived. Uh, The third one, I light up candles almost every night because I don't like the, the, the blue light when it's dark. <laughs> did, did you understand me? Yes? Yes? Oh, it's number three. <laughs> Not every night and just once a year, but I like that. <laughs> wow. I was about to guess the first one. It was true. <laughs> Anyone else? Anip? Carol? I'll go at the end. Okay. Uh, before, before somebody else goes, uh, hi, Luana. Hi, Andrea. Uh, we are just, uh, we've just introduced ourselves and we're just playing two truths and one lie. And you're welcome to think, uh, think about three statements about yourself and then we'll play. And please vote. <laughs> yes. Uh, anyone? Matty? I can go. Maddie can't guess. We like know each other. So, um, and are in the same house right now. Um, let's see. Um, my dad was a vaquero in Mexico and taught me how to ride a horse when I was little. Um, I have two friends. Like I used to dress in very dark colors until a couple years ago when I met two friends who would just wear like the craziest outfits. And then I started dressing more colorfully and I met one of those friends on the street and they didn't recognize me. And they're like, I'm gonna start dressing all grace. <laughs> we, yeah, anyway. Um, and then the other one, I kind of forgot. What was I gonna say? Oh, I had really long hair like past my waist for many years. Is that everyone? All right, I'm gonna say it was the first one actually. I know I rambled for the second one, so it probably sounded like a lie, but uh, I just don't know how to tell stories concisely. Yeah.
Anyone okay, else? so yeah, maybe I'll go now. Yes. So I think that story about the the fake story about the horse from Cairo uh, reminds me about a story from my life where like we were climbing down from this hill and we had uh, like we were all riding on horses and then I like the horse that I was on that horse slipped and so I fell towards this side uh, of the road right so this was all mountains and there was this cliff so I fell towards the right side and then the horse fell inside the cliff so that was that was that uh, and then the second one would be um, that I have never failed an examination in my life like an academic examination um, and the third one will be that I have I have um, I have not like driven but I have been inside a train engine right so the Indian Railways train engine <laughs> Yeah, but I like they let me fiddle with all the controls that they had there. Yeah, so there you go. So I see that the most bets are not are on me failing an exam. <laughs> but yes, I think uh, so. Yeah, I think that is that is everything, right? Yes. Okay. So the th third one is not true. I tried to get in, but yeah, they won't let me. So that. So that happened. <laughs> yes. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Has anyone been able to guess the correct <laughs> answer <laughs> till now? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, Andrea? I um I can try the lies. I'm sorry, my I just woke up. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to like be a little bit more like aware. That's my alarm actually. I'm so sorry. I don't know where I get here. Sorry. Um okay. Hi everybody. Um so for first lie, I'm gonna go. Uh I'm an incredible um, salsa dancer. Um, second lie or truth, I don't know. Um, my father has a pet alligator and has is missing one finger. Um, and uh, my favorite kind of food form is soup. The first one is a lie. I am a terrible dancer. But like, so the is the alligator is missing a finger for real? No, my father. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> I, I was the wondering. The alligator uh, got his finger. All right. Thanks, Andrea. That was amazing. I think I can go now. Um, uh, so, where where's my list? I'm also barely uh, conscious right now. <laughs> um, okay, uh, so the first, um, I'm currently in graduate school. The second is I just built a computer. And the third is that I was born in a snowstorm 
so bad that we could not go to the hospital to be birthed there. Could you repeat the second one? Yeah, um, I just built a computer, a PC. Okay, yeah, maybe that was very clockable, <laughs> very easy one. <laughs> maybe it was suspect because I tried to slip it in casually, but I am not in graduate school and I do not plan to be. <laughs> not 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 any not any tips. Wow. Luana, uh, uh, are you with us? Yes. Hi. I don't know. Hi. I don't know if I can speak English very well. But I will try. Um, the first one, I'm 18 years old. The second one, I have studied more than 20 schools in my country. The third, my favorite kind of books is fantasy. Is what? Fantasy. Fair to you. Can you repeat the second one, please? The second one, I already studied more than 20 schools. Okay, the wrong was the third one. My favorite kind of book is romance. I don't know how to speak it. It's like dystopia to me too. I am actually 18 years old. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, it was nice knowing uh, a lot about all of you like we just got to know it so when uh joe and zachi are married <laughs> and that uh somebody has an alligator as a pet so it's interesting so uh i am just going to start the session now i mean it was the session it's not like this was not a part of the session it was the session so <laughs> Uh, yes, so just make sure that uh, all of you are prepared to sit for the next at least two hours. So if you want to uh, bring some water, if you want to have some snacks, if you want to have your tea, coffee, uh, you can take a minute and then uh, bring it wherever you're sitting. Make sure you're comfortable. You have some space to uh, you know move either your upper body or your full body so just make sure that you have space uh, are we ready to go should we should we move ahead all of you are ready can i see thumbs up oh, just get a snack just one sec but you can you can go i i will take my pc together so no problem yeah. Okay. So yes, uh, we've already been through the introductions. 
and I will talk a little about theater of the oppressed and the history and the techniques. And then uh, we'll have a little break and then we'll uh, get into the details of the because it's theater of the oppressed. What do we mean by oppression? Who's an oppressor and who, who are the oppressed? And then another after a little break, we will discuss the implementation of theater of the oppressed and where can we use it? How can we use it? What's the politics of it? And why uh, do we use uh, TO uh, these days? And how do we use TO these days? I mean, since it has been uh, founded, the shape and size and the intensity of the work has changed. So how has it changed? And we're just going to uh, talk a little. And this is mostly an activity-based uh, workshop. So please keep your videos on because we'll constantly be engaging in the uh, activities after the first part of it. So yeah, there are a few agreements that uh, I would like to uh, bring in uh, uh, onto the table for all of us. The very, very first agreement is uh, be open, please be open to new uh, information, new ideas, somebody else's opinions, uh, the activities, uh, because this uh, session will have a lot of physical uh, movements, images, and uh, it's very important for all of us to just shed our he uh, hesitations and inhibitions out of the, uh, out of the room and then uh, come back with openness. Whatever we share here in this, uh, session stays here. I mean, confidentiality is a very, very important and crucial part of the session. Uh, do not judge anybody in this room based on their opinions, their expression, their experiences, and especially yourselves, because we tend to judge ourselves a lot. And that's what we're going to discuss in this session. Uh, and uh, Share, share experiences, uh, whatever is coming to your mind, whenever is coming to your mind, so that all of us can, you know, pick on different aspects of the discussion and then keep the conversation going on and learn as much as possible. And uh, if you, any one of you would like to bring something else into the agreement, please unmute right now and just share whatever you want all of us to, you know, uh, do or behave or feel so yes any if and if you do not agree with any of the agreements because they are agreements and if you disagree you can voice out your opinion so yes please go ahead yes uh, Vanna, would you maybe suggest that we turn off the recording for this one so that it just helps us to be a little more open maybe <laughs> you can turn off the recording when we start sharing like whenever the activities are or maybe we'll pause it then and yes we we'll pause whenever somebody says that they don't want this to go into the recording we'll immediately All right. stop yes yes sure so please everyone please uh, feel free to let us know uh, if at any time it starts making you uncomfortable yes yeah. okay great thanks manna thank you everyone yeah and thank you. This brings uh, a very important point that I missed. Ask for what you need. So most of the times, because I am not a therapist and because we're going to talk about oppression, the conversations might be triggering for you. So uh, it, it might be triggering for some of the people. So what you can do is you can step back whenever you want. You can switch off your video, disconnect from the conversation. Or if you want something from us in the conversation you can also just ask what you need and we'll be there i'll be there uh, as a facilitator i'll be there to hold uh, the emotion for you so if anything is triggering for you please disconnect and you know you're the best judge of what you need in that moment so yes be vocal about it do we all agree to the agreements yes okay amazing i'll just move forward and if you have something i'm oh, sorry i can't see the chat yes okay hey hi nelson welcome okay wait thank you so yes theater of the oppressed and uh uh as the name suggests, it's theater 
of the oppressed people or a group of people or a community uh, who are uh, you know uh, facing something a problem together they use theater as a tool to have dialogue about that problem and maybe or maybe not find a solution to that problem so it's the theater of the people who are being oppressed you give them this tool and you say okay let's find out what's the history of the oppression how is it happening why is it happening let's figure out things together as a community all the people who are actually going through this oppression they come together and they use the tool of theater to explore and have dialogue about it uh, talk about where it is coming from so the history is basically uh, the uh, imagine if theater of the oppressed is a tree the soil was the politics of the community country whatever you want to name i'm just going to use the word community but i'm also talking about a country i'm also talking about a state i'm also talking about a group of people so basically what's their politics what is happening in their economy what kind of philosophy they have uh, they have a history of and then on this soil on the soil of a country's politics philosophy history what kind of economy they have what kind of people they have what kind of sol- uh, do they uh, feel uh, the solidarity with each other and on this soil we use images sounds and words and they become the root of this whole because theater is all about you know images the body and by images we mean the images that we made make from our bodies so we use our bodies we use the sound and we use words and actions to create games together and then these games can have various techniques for example newspaper theater was the oldest technique of theater of the oppressed where people used to uh, uh, used to create images and play around with the newspaper headlines and whatever news they used to read they used to pick up the words and then play around with it and uh, agusto bual was the uh, founder and he started theater of the oppressed when he was basically uh, exiled from his own country and he wasn't uh, you know allowed to uh, stay in brazil and the government had a lot of policies that people did not agree with so he started theater of the oppressed and the first tool was newspaper theater and then he started with a uh, legislative theater where people used to come together and for example if they have to uh, design a policy about farmers they would go to the farmers and they they would ask them to theater what exactly do you want in the policies and they then they would draft the a uh, policy and take it to the government so that was legislative theater designing policies by asking the people what do they want in these policies and that's how because, and that is why theater of the oppressed is very political in nature because it started uh, as a as a form of uh, revolution and resistance uh, using theater so it, it it's very political in nature it it it, it actually bonds from the politics of a community and a society and what is the power structure so newspaper theater legislative theater and then there was image theater image theater is again using bodies human bodies as images and then trying to express and have a dialogue about things and feelings and emotions and just connecting with your body forum theater is another uh, form where there uh, i'll explain what forum theater is and then uh, after a lot of Uh, evolution right now theater of the oppressed also has two different branches called rainbow of desire and invisible theater invisible theater is basically all of us might have done invisible theater it's basically when the audience doesn't know that theater is happening for example you go to a mall and then you um, the two friends just start quarreling with each other just to see how people react so that's invisible theater so invisible theater is basically when you're doing theater but the audience doesn't know that you're doing theater and you're basically trying to understand their uh their world view their their perspective their opinions and how do they believe in something and why do they not believe in something and rainbow of desire is basically uh, getting inside the human mind and, and trying to understand the rainbow the different colors of a person's desire uh maybe i am facing an oppression and i want to take an action against it 
but I'm not able to. So there is a rainbow of desire that actually plays in my head. And that is why I, uh, you know, behave contradictorily. So this, these are the different techniques and forms of theater of the oppressed and all of them, um, most of the, most of them uh, were used when it started, when uh, theater of the oppressed started in 1970s in Brazil by Augusto Boal. And these days, Forum Theater, Image Theater, Rainbow of Desire are the mostly uh, very uh, uh, popularly known techniques of theater of the oppressed. So what exactly is theater of the oppressed? Imagine a washing machine and imagine you put some actors, some actors who uh, understand uh, a topic, an issue, oppression, and then you put them together with a joker. Joker is basically a person who facilitates the conversation and the dialogue. I am going to be the joker in this session. And then there are spectators. So spectators are different from spectators spectators only watch and spectators watch and then take action they replace the actors and then they take their place and then they try to implement a solution that they feel is prompt in the situation so if you imagine if you mix a joker actor spectator uh, uh, together and then what comes out of it in a washing machine what comes out of it is reflection all of the, the community members, the actors and the respect actors and the audience, they all reflect on things. They take action. And then what happens is dialogue. So dialogue is very critical for theater of the oppressed because all, this, all these techniques basically are creating space to have dialogue uh, where everybody gets to say what they feel about the issue and what they think uh, should happen. So this is... Uh, uh, this is a typical forum theater uh, scenario where people are sitting. These uh, the people in the audience are people who actually understand the oppression. The actors are people who have been through the oppression, and then the joker kind of tries to uh, break the boundaries and bring them together to actually understand the issue, the oppression that we're talking about. So, yes. Uh, that's it for now and we're just uh, the theory the, the theory part is over sorry <laughs> too much talking but we're just uh, whatever I have just blabbered uh, in the past 20 minutes we're just going to experience them one by one uh, by actually doing activities so do you want to take a break or should we just continue the session we can take two or five minutes break if you want, and we can go ahead also. Should we go ahead? Okay. Okay, let's, let's go ahead then. All right, so I invite all of you, if you can, and if the bandwidth allows, please switch on your videos and uh, take a stretch however you want to make sure your whole body is stretching engage every single body part in the stretching your neck your back your hands your arms your tummy your chest and your legs. Mm. Okay. And take three deep breaths. Release it from your body. Okay. Okay. Yes. So I have an activity. Uh, so when I say one, no, okay, let's do this way. When I say stretch, you have to stretch. 
ठीक है वेन आई से अप यू हैव टू डू दिस एंड वेन आई से क्लैप यू क्लैप ओके थ्री सिंपल इंस्ट्रक्शन स्ट्रेच अप क्लैप राइट स्ट्रेच अप क्लैप वेरी सिंपल क्लैप अप स्ट्रेच अप स्ट्रेच क्लैप अप स्ट्रेच क्लैप अप अप स्ट्रेच क्लैप ओके सी वेरी इजी ओके सो वील आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू ब्रिंग सम ट्वेस्ट इन टू द गेम वेन आई से स्ट्रेच यू क्लैप वेरी सिंपल वेन आई से स्ट्रेच यू क्लैप वेन आई से क्लैप यू डू दिस एंड वेन आई से अप यू स्ट्रेच okay stretch clap clap up and up is stretch okay very simple stretch <laughs> clap <laughs> up clap stretch up clap stretch up clap <laughs> it's okay i think it has gotten uh, a bit complicated so let's do very simple activity up and down up and down okay but we'll switch so up is down down is up okay up <laughs> down up down okay down up <laughs> down all right down <laughs> yes so why why do you think this is happening <laughs> even with simple instruction like up and down conditioning perfect answer it's basically we are condi conditioned to believe that this is up and this is down and it's very difficult when somebody tells us otherwise and that's what happens the brain isn't able to process that information so fast because it has conditioned to believe in something else the information is the exact opposite and that is why the body is like uh, what do i do what do i do and this conditioning and this the same theory goes for everything else in our lives so if we are conditioned to believe in something if somebody tells us otherwise the body is like eh, what did you just say i don't know how to process this information <laughs> right uh okay so tell me when i was saying up and down and all of you were confused what exactly did you feel but you don't have to tell me you have to show it with an image and by image i mean your body so from your body you make an image to express how how confused exactly were you when i said one two up and down and stretch and clap and up and stretch and clap can the image move no image is frozen always images don't move so the image has to be a frozen one okay take your time and i will count till 1 from 3 and 
on one you have to make that image all right if you if it helps you can close your eyes Three, two, one. Okay, everybody who can be in your images, be in your image and then look at the screen. Look at everybody else's image. We can put on the gallery view. Look at their images and see what do you what do you see? Look at their facial expressions. What do you see? And slowly come back out of the image. Yes. Say one word, or you can type it out. Uh, one word that comes to your mind when you saw these images. Fun. Doubt. Funny, bloody, scattered, diversity, curiosity. Hmm. Stuck. Yeah. I'll, I'll just pick this word. Stuck. Similar. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just pick this word. Stuck. Close your eyes. Or if you feel uncomfortable closing your eyes, look uh, on the floor at one spot. Close your eyes and imagine a situation when you actually felt stuck. It can be any situation in your life. When you really felt stuck, there was no place to move, nowhere to go. You didn't, you didn't know what to do. You can open your eyes whenever you're ready. Okay. Again, I would like you to share in words, in words. How was that feeling? What kind of emotions did you go through for experience? Sad, frustrated. Stress, stuck, scared, uncomfortable, anxious. Important. Claustrophobic. Despair. Okay. Uh, what do you think oppression is? What's your definition of oppression? What do you understand by oppression? Angry. Violence. Suppressed. No freedom. Structures determining my movement to self-determination. Misinformation. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. 
सॉरी सेंसरशिप ओके सो ऑपरेशन यस जी नॉट वैल्यूइंग अ काइंड ऑफ ह्यूमैनिटी यस सो बेसिकली ऑपरेशन इज व्हेन यू सब्जुगेट समवन physically emotionally mentally exploit their rights that's what oppression is and in it can be at any in, it can exist at any intensity in any shape any form anywhere whenever you are subjugating somebody their rights mentally emotionally physically that's oppression and it comes in all forms and shapes and uh, shapes and sizes so that's what oppression is so i to understand exactly how oppression uh, manifests in our lives i want to play a game and i invite you to find one object that you can find around you it, it can be any object one object that you that you feel is calling you to pick it out pick it up and bring it any one object and you whenever you are ready with your object you can show it on the screen hi uh, miss cho i don't know if i'm pronouncing your own name right yes uh you can also play this game and you can also switch on your video if you want Are we all ready with our objects? Okay, Joe is still out, looking for it. Ah, uh, he's back. Okay. All right. So, uh, and also, I need your permission. Can I click a screenshot of uh, this activity? Is is everybody okay with it? all right thank you so uh, what you have to do is uh, pick your object whatever it is now place it on the screen in a way where it looks more powerful than you for example if i have this pen i have to place it somehow on the screen so that this pen looks more powerful than me All right. Okay. Three, two, one, and uh, freeze. all right have a look at everybody's positioning okay one of you can just uh caro you can just break your image and have a look at everybody else's uh positioning and tell me what do you see what do you feel 
I think it's kind of cool. Everyone's uh, there's a lot of people who are covering their faces. Like I find it interesting that so similarity. Um, like some people I can only see one eye or two eyes. Um, also a lot of images are like close to screen, so they appear larger than others, or they're like held up. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You can can you go back to your image? Uh, Zachi, what do what do you feel about everybody else's image? I will look at. I think uh, I feel similar to what Caro said. You know, so everybody. Uh, yeah, I don't even know it myself, so I feel that way. But anyway, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Andrea, why uh, why have you what what are you doing and uh, why is it this way? <laughs> Um, it was really funny when you said that we have to make the, the object more powerful than us. And I chose like a flower fairy. So <laughs> I was like, how do I make more, this a little bit more aggressive or like more, more powerful taking over. So I just like put it towards the screen and like, it's sort of like blocking me and like, like. I don't know, impeding me to fully be connected to you because it's also closer to the camera. Okay, because it's closer to the camera, it looks more powerful. And I, I don't know if it looks more powerful, it feels like it will be more powerful because it's overtaking space. Okay, amazing. Uh, all of us can get back to uh, break our images. So uh, uh, a few things that uh, I think you have shared, uh, because it's taking more space, it looks more powerful or it feels more powerful because it's taking more space. So do you, uh, are you saying that taking more space is basically, uh, taking space is somehow related to uh, power? The more power we have, the more spaces we take, no matter where we are. Is that something you think? Yeah. I feel perhaps not just the taking, but the control and like the control you have over taking it. The, the fact that you might be able to decide when and what you mm. take the space. The control over the space. Okay. And, and Caro, you also said something very interesting that all of them, uh, all of us were trying to make the picture, make the object bigger than ourselves, or maybe we were hiding behind it. Why, why do you think was that? And Matty, you can also share because you kind of, you were hidden behind your object. Why, why uh, did you feel to do that? I think I did what I did because my object had a lot of area to see through it, actually but only if you put it very close, like back here, it seems like one mass and it's very small, but if you actually focus, like there's lots of holes. And so I was like trying to show that like there's space between the, like in the object itself to see through it. So it's, <laughs> I didn't intentionally choose this as an extended metaphor, but like the gears, you know, it's a, it's a moving gear like fidget toy, um, but just being like, you can find the gaps and the holes and the inconsistencies in it, if that makes sense. <laughs> yes, it has cracks. <laughs> yeah. But why, why, did you, why did you keep it very close to the camera, making ah. it bigger than your own self? <laughs> Well, yeah, I guess just so it felt overwhelming um, to the viewer, like it's massive, but also in order to expose the cracks, like, because you can only expose them when they are close to the camera. Does size matter? Uh, do, we, do we relate size with power, do you think? I think when displaying it to others, because this can feel really powerful and overwhelming 
at any size for me, but it won't be legible to other people unless it is, they can see it. Because if it's here, they cannot like tell what this is and what's going on. Mm. Are you are you are you also saying in other words that power is also relative? It depends on what the relationship between you and me and the object is and how I see it and how you see it. So I could have also done uh, yes, Andrea. Uh, can you unmute and say? It's okay. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt what you were saying. I was really interested. <laughs> Um, I was just saying, following Mati, like um, that power, it also feels quantifiable when you were asking about size um, and, and, and if size matters, I feel that, I don't know if size matters, but I feel the way that power is presented to you and the way that they ask you about it is like, how much power do you have? And so that much sort of lets you to think that power has, has like a size. But how do how do we explain how much power do we have? Because for much there there should be a parameter, no? That this is the parameter, and if you have this much power, so that's what that, that's the exact point where I was coming to. That power is relative. So I can actually place this pen here, and it will still be powerful because it's powerful. It doesn't matter it the positioning of it. If it's powerful, and we've explained that it's powerful, no matter where it will be, it will always be powerful. And it depends on how you are seeing it, like uh, what Matty was also saying, that it, if, if it's here, it's powerful for me, but not for you. So I have to place it here so that you also feel it's powerful. And, and I think that's the that's that's the thing about power that it's uh it's relative and it depends where who why how and then only we understand that okay this is how power works or or this is powerful and if we would have been in one place we would have uh, we we must have a lot of chairs and we would ex explore uh, with those chairs how to make one chair powerful and then we we'll understand a lot of things about power, but yes. Uh, let's do another activity to understand more, uh, to get deeper into this power and uh, its arguments. Uh, can, can we all choose a partner, on-screen partner? Hi, Gemma, if I'm pronouncing your name right. <laughs> Uh, can you can you switch on your video? Hi, hello. Okay, so all of us can choose uh, an on screen partner, uh, except me. So there will be equal number of people. And uh, one of you should name yourselves A, and the other should be, for example, if I and Anip are partners. So I will be Vandana Asha A and he will be Anip Sharma B. Can you do that? Or should I assign the partners? I don't want to do that. That is why I asked you to choose. Um, would anyone like to be my partner besides my wife? <laughs> sure, I'll be your partner. Cool. Thank you, Carl. Yes, and uh, Vanna, since we have like 12 people now, so maybe I uh, can partner up with you so that uh, we have 10 people. Yeah. Yeah. So. I will rename myself as Anip Sharma B then. Yes. Perfect. 
I will, go with, I will go with Luana because we are Brazilians and we have some difficult with the language, so we can help. We can help each other. Andrea, I'll go with you. So Zachi, um, would you like to be A or B? <clears throat> A, it's fine. Yeah. How will we be? Mm. Hi, uh, Cho. Uh, do we still have you? Are you with us? If not, I think, Anip, you can partner up with Nelson because. Log in, okay. The moment you log in, Joe and I can be partners. So yeah, we have worked it out. So, uh, hi Nelson, yes. Perfect. Nelson, should I, should I rename you as B? B, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I should be there. Yeah. Anul, do you want to be A or B? Oh, no. <laughs> B. Uh, I, I might. Okay. Are we all done? the renaming part of it okay so you might have done this activity it's called mirroring all you have to do it's very simple that you have to mirror your partner all right so uh, three rules to it keep your movements very slow and steady so that your partner can uh, follow them and copy them and mirror them Always maintain eye contact. The moment you turn, your partner turns and the mirroring will stop. So always maintain eye contact. Be very slow. Uh, and like, don't make such a move, movement because they won't be able to mirror it. So be slow so that they can follow. They can mirror and maintain eye contact. All right. Hi, G. Hi. Uh, I think you and I are partners. Yes. <laughs> so whoever is A, uh, they will be leading this mirroring activity and their partners B will follow them. All right. So on the count of three, two. Are we one. doing together? Or yes. Everybody all of us together. All you have to okay, do is okay. Pin your partner on your screen and then start mirroring them. It's okay. Sorry, we have to pin our partner so that we we go to speaker view and pin our partner. Yes, yes. Okay. Or if you can find them in the gallery view and still <laughs> not get distracted by everybody else's movement, you can do that. Uh, G for now, uh, you can follow me. Okay. Oh, you, you're A? Okay. Okay, I'll follow you. I'm the B. I'll follow you. So are we, are we ready with our partners pinned on our screen? Okay. So all the A's, you are the lead here. Uh, start leading your partner in three, Two, one. Thank you. 
and slowly the bees will start leading without disrupting the movement And imagine now if both of you are not leading, how will you work? Nobody is leading right now. How will that happen? Nobody is leading right now. But you still have to mirror each other. And we'll stop the mirroring in three, two, one. And you can come back to gallery view, remove the pin, come back. <laughs> yes. So what happened when you were leading? Only when you were leading. How did you feel? What happened? Stressful. Sorry, what? I feel stressful. Oh, <laughs> stressful. I, Why? 
because I have to think next move, you know, after the one move that I was, what should I do next, you know, because I'm leading. So I was like, I, sh I, sh I should better have a plan. <laughs> Responsibility. Hmm. I felt repetitive. I feel like I did some of the same stuff over. At one point, I looked over to someone else's video to be like, oh, do they have any other motions that I can copy? <laughs> Hmm. I had to be aware of my own camera space um, in order to know that my motions would actually be perceived or easy to follow. Because if I'm doing something over here that I think is great, but <laughs> you can't see it, that you have to be very yeah self-aware of this, this space. Okay. What what else did you all feel when you were leading, especially when you were leading? So I, I felt a bit funny and there should be fun. <laughs> and then at the same time, I, I didn't want to lose uh, this box. My gesture should go not go beyond the box. So these were the two things in mind. <laughs> Yeah, how did you feel? Yeah, sorry, I'm so sorry. And um, I, I felt, oh, yeah. uh, just quick, I, I also felt really playful, but it, it was also stressful. So it was like mixed, they were fighting each other. <laughs> Luana said, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so maybe was... comment. Oh, go ahead, Patrick, go ahead. <laughs> For me, it was something like, oh, I want to flow here and then I can't because uh, my partner is not getting what, I, what I'm doing. And I, it was trying to find the balance between doing something that I would like to do with presence and something that is a, uh, my partner was able to do. So it was like losing and finding this balance. Yeah. yeah, I think I was gonna, I think Patrick just nailed it. I was gonna say something similar of like wanting to um, like push your partner a bit, but never want to pushing, push it, push them too far. Um, and I was gonna maybe comment uh, a bit too on just like, how I've done this exercise like in person too. And I think it's interesting, yeah, how you have to be aware of like the framing of it. Um, but I just think it's still like really nice and uh, it still works, I think. Um, yeah. And so I was kind of like surprised by that. And I thought it was cool. What you have just shared, it's very relevant to uh, forum theater and its uh, pedagogy because when the actors of a forum theater are actually performing a play based on an oppression that they uh, experience, the idea, and that's what we talk to the actors, that you have to push the spectators enough uh, when they are coming on stage with an idea and with a solution and they want to implement it into the play but you don't push them uh, too far. So that's exactly what uh, we try to do when we're performing forum theater. Yeah. How did you feel when you were being led by your partner, when you were following? It's like very gracious. When I was looking, I, I was just um, in that moment. I, I was just following her, uh, Andrea. That's it. <laughs> okay. I feel like. No oh, sorry. Yeah. 
Yes, Carol, go ahead, please. I was going to say it was very different following the first time than it was when we're both leading at the same time. Because, like, um, I forget who said um, that we also looked at our own camera to see what we were doing and see if it was matching up with, the, with like, the person we we're following. But on the one where we're both co-leading, I feel like I spent a lot more time watching Joe's face than, like, body because I was trying to be like are you about to lead like are we switching off and then I felt a little bit more connected in that one and I feel like we both like laughed together more so yeah I like that a lot um like I've done this exercise a couple times before and usually when we get to that part it gets like really still and stuff but I felt like yeah I don't know it was like fun I felt like there was this weird understanding that like we're both gonna just kind of lead a little bit and just like go with it and it's nice and maybe it's because there's a camera lag or something but it's okay and it's fun and yeah it was good. I have a question for all of us. Uh, is it uncomfortable to uh, like be in this, uh, to talk about what is, what is it like to follow the other? Because for me, it looks like it's the more uh, subordinate, subordinated, subordinated, yes. Yeah, so position. Market. So it's like for me, for me, it's like uncomfortable to say that is meditative and it just goes, you flow, but at the same time, it's a little, it was uncomfortable for me to uh, think about my partner and think, oh, maybe she could do that or she could do a, another thing or she could be more present or more creative so i i don't know i'm i'm matching uh, the the feeling of rest because i'm not leading and also how i i was in this place uh, kind of judging and imagining what the other could do or not do and yeah and it's kind of a mixed feeling and I'm asking this, if it's, it's strange to talk about this position because we just jumped to the part where we were both leading and I would like to hear more voices if someone wants to say how it was to follow. For me, it was nice to follow, but it was, it was uncomfortable to think how nice it was to follow. <laughs> like, I, I really also found like Joe, it was very meditative. And I, I, I sort of like felt like a certain intimacy with Kanwal because I could see um, his reaction to my movement and, and like he will like be playful and like suddenly like go really slow and then suddenly go really fast. And like, he will like smile like that <laughs> to see if I had catched the fastest of the movement. And uh, and I and I was into it. I was like, yes. But then at the same time, like now that you're mentioning it, it was just like really easy for me to just like follow and let go. And and I don't know if that's like necessarily like a negative. Like I think it has like it can be both sides. But I don't know. Yeah, it, it was all over the place a little. I I enjoyed <laughs> I enjoyed following. <laughs> I think um, for me, following felt more playful than leading um, because I felt like I had to really focus and I was like oh am I gonna get it right and um, stuff like that while leading it I feel like I was just like thinking about it too much uh, for it to feel as playful and there are moments where I was like oh this is a fun like movement um, but sometimes I was like oh this is like like a boring movement and like could I think of like a more like fun thing to do Whereas where I was following, I feel like it was just fun, like throughout the whole thing. Okay, what if we 
merge the activity that the, the the object activity and this mirroring activity and what if the follower uh has lesser power as compared to the person who's leading in this mirror activity how would it look like any two people who would like to volunteer and all of us can just watch what happens when the leader has more power and how do you show it like this is the same prompt again that the leader has to be more powerful than the follower and how would that mirroring activity look then yeah kamal do do you want to be the leader or the follower follower <laughs> okay you don't want power basically <laughs> <laughs> anybody who wants power so uh, can i state one statement so either it's a, a love of power or power of love <laughs> okay it's the first one for now <laughs> <laughs> so that we, we can explore the second part of it anyone Are you asking us, um, hello everyone, uh, are you asking us um, to, to volunteer to, to lead or, or just what yeah. it would feel like if there's like a power? To, okay. Yeah, you, you volunteer to lead, Kaval, but just keep in mind that you have more power than them. That's not fun, um, but I can volunteer. <laughs> I can volunteer. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> Okay, so let me just spotlight both of you. Oh no, okay. I'm gonna move myself because my cat's crying. <laughs> okay. Yes, whenever both of you are ready, just remember that uh, Cho, you have a lot of power, at least more than Kaval, and you're leading him. So yes. Okay, three, two, one, and mirroring starts. Okay, three, two, one, and pause. What did what did you see? 
all the spectators what did you see what could you observe from this mirroring um i feel like the like to could like close their eyes um and stuff like that but i feel like kp like had to always be watching to see um what to was doing um and so it was like oh like like the level of focus like had to be different um that's like the first thing that came to mind okay anything else Yeah, so I think I also saw that Cho uh, could use the things that KP has, but, but she, uh, like uh, she uh, like they don't uh, like like the beard or the turban, right? So uh, they were getting KP to manipulate that also without actually having access to them. That mm -hmm. was also something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was a point I think when um, when G. Uh, did this the face thing um a face gesture that i think that they thought it was going to be fun to look at the other doing in a way and they mm -hmm. smiled a little and so i feel like that control of knowing that you're gonna put somebody else in a position that might be that might serve you um whatever whatever it is the way it serves you either for like fun generosity or or, or harm um I thought that was interesting that it was a, it was, I was recognizing something in there. Mm -hmm. uh, did, did Kaval look uh, uncomfortable at all at any point of time? No. Kaval, were you were you uncomfortable following it? No, <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> it was the same I did previously. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, it was a fun. I was just following. In fact, uh, at at that point when she said this, I think this is something she is trying to sh share the power with me. But I have to imitate. Uh, yeah. But otherwise, I didn't feel any discomfort. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For me, it was more of a playful, I just have to imitate. I'm enjoying that moment. <laughs> Gee, you're such a cute oppressor. <laughs> Who doesn't oppress at all? <laughs> I think that's a good comment about um, you know, when when you're leading, um, you don't have to really regard the person um, who is subordinate, who's supposed to follow you. And um, you don't have to think about um, the how the, the the potential embarrassment of the person because um, when I was partnering with you, Vandana, um, I didn't really think of using facial expressions, but this time, I did, and especially on a Zoom call, you know, people want to kind of present as decorously as possible. So, um, yeah, it, uh, it <laughs> um, that could sh certainly embarrass people to like stick their tongue out, you know, <laughs> on a Zoom call. Um, Kowal, you know, had fun with it, but um, that's certainly a potential, yeah. you know. And I, I am um, as the as the oppressor or the leader, um, the controller of the situation, I can dismiss um, yeah. the person's feeling. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly what I think Andrea also shared that. It was interesting that you used your facial expressions. Yeah. Any, anybody else who would like to volunteer for the leader and follow up? So I'm just going to remove this spotlight so that, yes, now I can see everybody. 
Anyone else who would like to volunteer? I can be the leader. I just need a follower. I can power. <clears throat> All right. If any anybody else wants to be the leader, please, you're most welcome. I'm just taking space because nobody else is. Anyone? No? I, I can go. I can go. Okay. Okay. Amazing. I'll just spotlight you. Zaki, do you want to go? No? <laughs> 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 I can go so. <laughs> okay, so Patrick has uh, power. And, uh, Joe is your subordinate. So yeah, Mirror mirroring starts in three, two, one. And mirroring stops in three, two, one. Thoughts, folks? What did you observe? What did you notice? What did you feel when this was happening? Anything? Uh, 
Um, I don't know if uh, I can so articulate so, this. Well. So we'll, he will come to you because you were actually doing it. I want the audience, the spectators, oh, yeah. to uh, you know share first, and then we'll come to both of you. I think they were both playful. <laughs> both were enjoying it. <laughs> and if somebody is trying to oppress, you, you just enjoy that moment. <laughs> you don't get oppressed. Though Patrick has a lot of flexibility and he knows it, he tried to stretch the way he thought Joe would not do that, but he could also do that. <laughs> that is the only place I think Patrick tried to uh, do something which Joe cannot do. Mm. Anyone else? Other thoughts? I didn't really observe any kind of power, um, like hierarchical kind of power dynamic between the two. And I think probably because they were just kind of being themselves participants in this, equal participants in this um, in this role playing mm -hmm. drama. But um, yeah, so but if it was in a um, if it was like seriously, you know playing the role of um, one having control and the other having um, very little control of movement. I think it would be very uncomfortable to watch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyone else? What did you feel, Joe? Yeah, I had an interesting revelation um, because, like, it was really fun to like follow Patrick, but then there's like I realized it at the in the part where he was doing the the um, pointing because it's just like impossible to follow, right? And just made me like think about um, how like often in my life, I'll speak for myself, but just like how I can get like really competitive and like how power can be fun. And it's often like this like fun kind of competitive thing at first until it's just not. And then you like realize, like at first you think like it's equal and you're like, okay, yeah. Like this person is treating me equally. We're in this together, like this is fun. I think a lot of people try to like hide their hierarchy a lot of the times, like managers that try to be your friends or something like this. I know I'm kind of straying off with this too, but then there's like, cause like power is, I think that's what I realized. It's like power is fun, right? And then you just like realize at a certain point that, oh, but I don't have the power and I don't have control. And now it's not fun, even though it was still fun following Patrick that whole time, but it could have been, way less fun you know and it's like a slippery slope and that's what's like so scary about like power I think especially maybe like in the United States and certain other places too where you try to like I don't know make everything fun and make competition fun and stuff but sometimes it like isn't um, and it's hard to tell sometimes when it stops being fun. Patrick what do you, what do you feel? Most of the time, it was very 
uh, very funny me and there were some moments so in in the beginning i was thinking of doing something like oh a, a warming thing and after uh, rage or uh, rapid movements and to yeah i i think joey said what i was trying to do like being kind of a friend and also doing something that may, may, maybe would be uncomfortable. And for me, there was, uh, I, I think, uh, a strange part that it was when I was doing this. And when it was getting to the face and I, I, I was thinking, oh, maybe Joe will be embarrassed because the how you feel the touch here is different from here so doing this together was a kind of a, a, a strange thing to do and how could i manipulate that or uh, lead him to do that it was it, was, it, it, it got me somehow and but a, another thing for me was that joe was very into the thing so and some, uh, sometimes I was like just laughing because he was really, really doing a facial expression. <laughs> so I didn't want to lead anymore. It was like, oh, I, I'm, uh, she, he gained me. I was like, uh, okay, you, you won the game. So <laughs> we're not, we're not fighting anymore. It was, it was very, it was very funny to feel this. So it was more or less like this. Okay. Yeah, I think very interesting uh, principles of uh, TO you just uh, shared very subtly. So I'm just going to reiterate them. Once I remove your spotlights and I, so that I can see all of your faces. Uh, gallery view, yes. Yeah, so I can see everybody. So, uh, what Patrick just said was somehow relates to the process of dehumanization of the oppressor. So uh, often in, when we talk about oppression, we always talk about the oppressed and we never really talk about the oppressor. What happens with the oppressor? And why is the oppressor the oppressor? And what's the story behind it? And it... Uh, usually always involves the process of dehumanization of the oppressor. Why? Very interestingly, what happened both the times when uh, I think G and uh, Kaval were also uh, mirroring each other and then Joe and Patrick, what happens is that uh, all of us keep switching between the roles of oppressed and oppressor every single time in our lives. We keep switching between the roles. You cannot always be the oppressed and no one can always be the oppressor. We are oppressed in one situation, but we become the oppressor in another situation. For example, very simple example, because that's the thing that I work with here in uh, India. In domestic violence, what happens is that the husband hits the wife, oppressor and oppressed very clearly. And then the wife has a lot of agitation. And when the child is bothering her, she kind of slaps him. Then the roles got switched. Now the mother is the oppressor and she hit, uh, she hit the child. So he becomes the oppressor. He goes somewhere else in some other space and he hits somebody else, slaps, abuses, something, does something. And the role changes. So we, as humans, we keep switching the roles of oppressor and oppressed. So nobody is always the oppressor, nobody is always the oppressed. And what happens in the process of oppression is that the oppressor is always dehumanized from inside and from the outside. Uh, now I will invite all of you to think about one moment or one incident when you were oppressed. You don't have to share it. But just think about it. Think about the incident. Uh, what happened? What were the people involved? Who was there? 
what exactly was being said what was the place uh where were you what were you saying doing wearing feeling uh if there was an uh, oppressor or oppressors uh what was happening do you remember the incident do you remember the situation maybe if you want you can close your eyes and try to uh explore the details of the incident as detailed as you can be what colors of uh pants you were wearing how did you do your hair that day if it's just one incident if it's a series of incident then maybe think about uh the most intensive experience now i invite you to think about uh don't think about it actually <laughs> just go into the image if you remember that feeling if you remember how you were feeling if you remem remember the experiences that you are having in your body just go straight away into an image 3 2 1 now go to the next image again about the same incident same experience what else were you feeling 3 2 1 another image 3 2 1 and now come back okay uh jo zachi and uh Andrea I'm just going to spotlight and uh, can you just uh, make your images again your first image can i spotlight the people i think yes okay all of us will just see okay first image 3 2 1 okay observe and then next image 3 2 and next one 3 2 1 Okay now i want people who are watching to share one word that comes to their mind when they see these images
You can unmute and say those words or you can type it in the chat. Invalidation. There was a distress when Andrea, I could see, and distress. Joe, it was, what on earth I should do? Mm -hmm. Sarah, is that she was upset? Yeah. Upset? I could also notice the confinement of space. The images did not take a lot of space. All the images were like going even smaller and smaller and smaller. They were shrinking, the body was shrinking. Anyone else? Any word that comes to your mind? If you have to name these images, what would you name it? Lack of hope. Defensive. Look away. All right. If, uh, for example, uh, uh, Andrea's image, uh, can, Andrea, can you, can you make your first image? If somebody has to support in, uh, Andrea's image, can you make another image to support her? Anyone? Can you do this? Yeah, wait, let me just. Andrea, can you go back to your image? Zoe and uh, Joe and Zachi, do you, do you want to, do you have images to, so that you can support Andrea? To Andrea? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. I am just going to remove all the spotlight. Yes. So yes, uh, there are some other people who play their role in this situation. For example, what I think Kamal and Joe and uh, Zachi tried to do, they were being the allies. Now, allies are the people who keep uh, switching their sides from the oppressor to the oppressed. 
they uh, allies are the people who do not have a role to play uh, in the power dynamics of uh, oppressor and the oppressed but they definitely can play a role if they want so the allies can either support for example uh, if i talk about a situation uh, again the same same example a woman who is experiencing uh, domestic violence who is going through do domestic violence who can be the ally in the situation the saying uh, i mean the someone who are the same similar situation can be ally who oh in the household You're... any anywhere who can who can be the ally the wife But, that who suffer from domestic violence can be ally for her a neighbor mm -hmm. might be a neighbor yeah friends? Mm -hmm. friends if if we are talking about an office uh, situation it might be the yeah. other colleagues so there are people around us in a situation that play the role of allies now they, if they support uh whom are they supporting depends on the allies in most of the situations the allies are actually not doing anything and hence supporting the oppressor and that is why the oppression is basically the the oppressor is able to continue whatever they're doing so there are different people who play their roles when uh, we are talking about a situation now another question if uh, a situation is between two people but other people from the same system play their part in it what does it become i think india kind of answered that question uh in the very beginning of this session structure i can you repeat that question uh i'm saying if the interpersonal issue or the interpersonal oppression uh in a, in an interpersonal oppression there are different people from the same system who actually get involved in this issue what what does it become becomes a larger issue which it is always now again taking the same example uh the husband and wife uh they had an argument about something an interpersonal issue right the husband uh raises his hands on the wife again an interpersonal issue it's their marriage that is falling apart the wife has normalized this behavior of the husband internalized an internalized issue she has normalized it she has normalized the violence she has normalized the behavior in an internalized issue neighbors can hear it but they don't do anything about it or they do something about it what does it become it becomes an institutional issue now but all of it is coming from a space where this is an ideological problem so these are the four eyes of oppression uh can you see my screen yes yeah. these are the four eyes of oppression so any issue that we face or any kind of oppression has four layers to it the 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 most visible or not so visible thing is the internalization of the oppression that we uh that we implement our own, on our own selves we suppress our own selves i myself uh am thinking that just because i'm a girl i'm not 
allowed to do this so i shouldn't do this or if i do this i feel guilty that's an internalized issue then there is interpersonal when somebody else is asking me not to do it like my parents don't travel the world because people are not nice it's an interpersonal issue then it's happening in our school college family even family is the is an institution school college offices is an institutional issue and it it all is happening because there is ideology playing its part because we believe in ideological uh, theories and philosophies and that is why it's happening and most of the time people uh, have also started saying that they don't really exist in layers but rather in circles who actually are over uh, lapping each other so it's not necessary that only internalized can become interpersonal internalized is also ideological and also institutional and also interpersonal and it goes same for the other three circles so all of them are overlapping each other and and this is this is exactly why uh theater of the oppressed is very very political in nature because it it uh, it is born from the politics of a family of a person from the little bubbles that we carry around each other carry around uh, with us and and uh, yeah and this happens in every scenario this uh, happens everywhere every every oppression has these four phases where we have internalized something then there is interpersonal then there is institutional and then there is ideological and because the ideology exists exists everything else exists i ask a question on that yeah. so um you know when you work with um you know these these women i don't know if you work with uh, um um i'm not going to assume that they're just women either right or that the like victim survivors but when you work with um people using pedagogy of the oppressed do you have just you know like the um the exercises that we did um do you have discussions afterwards with you know kind of referring to all four of those layers in some way and how do you I don't know if you are planning on doing that but I, I know it's a huge question but I'm just wondering how you go about doing that getting to the idea like really deep ideological stuff yeah we uh, when when uh, this was more of a session for the facilitators or people who are interested in knowing the pedagogy of theater of the oppressed but when we are working with the community it's very different uh i mean they don't even know that we're doing theater of the oppressed uh for four five good four five months and even if we have done forum theater they don't know that it's called forum theater so what happens in forum theater is that we uh we we create a play and the play has usually a very sad ending the protagonist the protagonist of the story the people who are actually going through that uh situation they lose in the end so the, we have an audience the spectators and then we play this uh, play with uh, in front of them and then we ask them did you like the ending of course they say no we did not like it the protagonist uh, basically lost and we didn't like it we want her to or him to win so we say okay we're going to do the play again now whenever you think that you can do something very different from the protagonist you say stop you come on stage you replace the protagonist and then you try to implement a solution and we'll see what happens and then different uh, people in the spectators and that is why they are called spectators because they are not just watching but they come on stage and they take an action and they try to explore the issue so we this this uh, ignites a, a conversation a dialogue among all of them so that's what we do we start with activities we connect people with the body so there are a lot of physical activities that basically connect us with our bodies with our emotion then we start exploring a bit by bit through image theater we did a lot of image theater today all of us 
So we start with image theater and then we move to dynamization of image theater, like move uh, what would be the real and the ideal. And that's how we start doing it. And then through image theater, we kind of come to a play. Like what's one situation that you feel very passionate about? Ah, then, then we start adding words to it. Then we start adding sound to it. And then that's how a play uh, you know, is, is created by the people and they don't even know that they're doing forum theater or image theater, but they do it. So that's how we work in communities. Thanks so much for that explanation. Yeah. I learned a lot just by listening just to the few minutes. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, Joe, you wanted to ask something. Yeah, just <clears throat> building off that, I think you may have answered this a little bit already, but I was just curious, like, how do you prepare spectators for, like, participating, assuming you don't just, like, uh, I don't know, or, or, if, or if you do, just, like, have them in the audience, and you're just like, all right, now it's time for you all to get on stage, um, or do you do, like, activities with the spectators, like, at the beginning, to kind of like create more of like a space. Um, and I know like forum theater is like probably, it's like super contextualized to like all the different communities, but I don't know if it's possible for you to maybe just like share like a short list of like activities or how you kind of like, yeah, like um, orient your like, yeah, uh, facilitation for spectators to like get them into that headspace to participate in uh, theater and assuming they've never acted before like in their lives and stuff like that so uh the spectators are already prepared because they are actually watching a play based on the traumas and experiences of their own lives so we just need to get them tuned in with their bodies a bit with some warm-up activities like circle and across and doing something and then playing with words so that they, they just they're active and the ice has been broken and they are all warmed up to do things but because whatever they're watching is already it 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 triggers them a lot because uh, most of most of the time the spectators are the people who are experiencing whatever whatever is happening on stage either that or they are allies so we make sure that spectators are the people who are either the oppressed or the allies or sometimes it's the oppressors but most of the time whenever there are oppressors in the uh, system they either try to ruin everything by giving a very different uh, you know, perspective and commenting on things very differently from other people. But, uh, but th because there are a lot of people in the spectators who have experienced uh, the trauma, they kind of stand up for themselves because they see, uh, they see the importance of uh, that space and the dialogue and why every everybody is there. So yeah, so spectators are always. Uh, it, it consists of people who are who are the oppressed oppressed or the allies or potential allies I mean and so do you like seek out this audience and like make sure that you're like doing a forum theater in like a pretty controlled like environment um, of like okay so it is like kind of open to the community but you yeah. know your community like really well and you know that these people are going to relate to yeah. Play. And that is okay. why the, the issue that the play, the topic of the play, the subject of the play has been chosen by the community itself or the people itself. So it works that way because they, they wanted to work on it. They wanted to explore the issue and that is why we prepare a play. Awesome. And the yeah. actors are Thank usually you. the community members only. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, yeah. And like Augusto Boal says, all of us are actors. We're just playing our role in the revolution of the world. <laughs> we just don't know it. Oh, Vandana, may I ask one thing? So in, in certain situations, you may face few, um, if it is something ideological, uh, and if let's say it's in a 
in a village, there is an etiology that the way uh, women have to carry themselves or men have to carry themselves. So do you also face challenges uh, doing this kind of a theater show in such a community? A lot. Yeah. A okay. lot. <laughs> It's it 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 uh, we we get a lot of resistance, a lot of resistance. And it's very difficult. Uh, also considering how what's my age and my gender and what kind of role do I play uh, in this new community? But then I'm a, I'm an alien, an outsider. So yeah, it, it's difficult. But once uh, the trust has been built, I think then. It kind of works. So any specific tools you use to build that uh, or some way to build that trust? Just going on lots of dinners and tea, <laughs> teas and just spending time with them. They offer me, hey, come have tea. And then I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just having lots and lots of, spending a lot of time with the community like with their children, playing with their children, talking to the women, talking to the shopkeepers, every, saying namaste to everybody, just, yes. Although it's difficult, I mean, I'm not romanticizing it. It's very difficult to build a trust with the community. Normally, uh, so initially I used to do it in collaboration with organizations, so organizations who have been in the community for 10, 15 years, and they already have trust. So I'm just a facilitator from that organization. But now that I'm here in a village by myself, I now understand how difficult it is to build that trust. Any more questions? Yes, uh, so Vanna, maybe I'll ask one. Yes, uh, so um, again, I, I think that a lot of time it happens that the people who are being oppressed, they, they don't really, because of the four eyes that you mentioned, right? Uh, it is very difficult to acknowledge that we are being oppressed and then uh, when you say that you are going to these communities where you are an outsider, so how do you, or maybe like, uh, how do you actually get them to first of all acknowledge so that they can go ahead and tell you that, hey, you know, this is what we want as the topic of the play or uh, the theater that you are going to be doing. So maybe uh, if you would like to share how, uh, what is, what is the way that you get them to acknowledge or identify that the oppression is happening first of all? That is an amazing question. And it, uh, it, it just brings us back to a principle that I forgot to share of theater of the oppressed is, especially for forum theater is that the protagonist should be willing to play their part in that change, to bring, bring about change. I mean, it's very important in a forum theater to have a protagonist who wants to fight, who acknowledges that there's something wrong and wants to fight, then only uh, the allies and other people can play their roles. Otherwise, it's of no use. So for, for uh, things, uh, for spaces where they are not aware that something wrong is happening, I think we do other kind of engagements and not theater of the oppressed or forum theater because it's very first, very, very important for the oppressed to realize that they are being oppressed. And then only we can, uh, then only the tool of TO actually works. Otherwise it won't work. It's not for awareness and sensitization. It's for revolution. So it revolution only happens when you want to do it. That's, and especially in forum theater, we always have the protagonist who's fighting, who's struggling to, you know, uh, do something about whatever is happening, so something about the situation. If your protagonist in a forum theater is not willing to take a step, your forum theater is dead, basically. 
yeah, I kind of feel like a, like, oh, sorry. Okay, so no, yes, please that's my question. Just a comment. Like, I kind of feel like um, in my experience, like people are like, easy to identify that they've been oppressed, but I think people are hard to like acknowledge that like, they are oppressed at least somehow. I think that part is really difficult for the people, you know, like, maybe like I'm a social worker, so a man social worker to acknowledge that, you know, like uh, we somehow, you know, that like every, I mean, as you said before, like everybody have a oppression bringing like both roles, you know? So I feel like, I kind of feel like uh, when I talk with the community or work with the community, it's easy like people to, and people just notice that they've been oppressed in different various kind of way, but somehow they didn't see that they're being an oppressor in a way to another, to, you know, different kind of community. Anyway, just a comment. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, what you are saying, Anip, is also true. There are, I mean, where I am working right now, I've been working for a year now here in this village and women really don't feel that they are being oppressed and they really feel that, uh, they really feel obliged to thank their husbands that uh, they are happy and the children are like family is the best place even though we get beaten but it's the best place my parents are the best so there is no acknowledgement and that is why I have I haven't touched theater of the oppressed at all here well, all I'm trying to do is create that space where we they get exposure and the moment they get exposure maybe they will realize that okay something is wrong something is wrong and the moment they realize that then only we can do something about it but i i know that it is the situation yeah andrea sorry your question um i'm curious too about some of the exercises like you said at the beginning can be triggering and um and and even the last the last one that we did of like sort of like remembering um and and uh, um, a scenario where we felt oppressed that was like super triggering to me, and I'm I'm wondering how do you hold the space for that pain too? There are uh, activities and uh, not in this uh, session because it didn't uh, go to that extent, but it happens usually. And then uh, I think as a facilitator also. Uh, because I'm not just a theater of the oppressed uh, practitioner, but also an applied theater facilitator. So in applied theater, you get a lot of therapeutic tools that you use as a facilitator and also distancing and, uh, you know, taking a pause and uh, sharing about it. So it, it, ha it has happened. A lot of people, people were uncomfortable during the session. And then we do whatever is suitable in that situation. I mean, whether it's just creating a distance for, for a period of time or just talking about it or maybe not continuing with the session then we take it offline and there there are uh, rituals in every session where we kind of which what uh, which is what exactly what we were do we were going to do after this question and answer round like shaking it off and just rubbing everything off your body, all the difficult ex experiences. So yeah, ritualizing is very important, especially in, uh, in conversations where people can get triggered. So we, ri we ritualize everything like shaking off, taking deep breaths, distancing yourself. Yeah. So if we have no more questions, then let's shake off. Let's shake off everything. Shake off everything. Shake off all the difficult experiences from your body, uh, emotions, from your legs, from your tummy, from your head. Rub it off. Rub it off. Rub it off. Anything, anything unwanted in your body, rub it off from your face. From your head, from your shoulders, from your back, rub it off. <sighs> and take three, three deep breaths and release them with the sound. <sighs> All right. <laughs> so 
yes. Uh, okay. Anything that you would like to say, share? Anyone? Well, then I, I did have a couple of questions, but now we shared it. <laughs> if you want, you can ask them. It's okay. Okay. So this is this is about how uh, those people behave, uh, right? Uh, as a LE or oppressed or even that uh, protagonist, uh, how they should respond in certain situations. So that is one aspect. Then, uh, as you said, there is a power game, and that power game is because uh, this person is earning. Because of this person, we are getting the food on the plate. So, so that's why they internalize. Okay, if even if this person is mishandling or doing some manhandling with me, it should be okay because I'm just cooking at home. I'm not doing that. So that that is internalized because this person is the earning member. Because of him, I'm. Uh, eating, my kids are eating, this, I'm wearing clothes, everything. My whole life is dependent on this person. So that's a, a big internalization uh, that has come, uh, that belief system has come from his, from her father, from grandfather, it's whole patriarchy. Mm -hmm. So they would be responding as per that patriarchy only. Maybe um, for that particular situation, they may behave differently. But mm -hmm. again, if a slightly different situation comes, again, there would be a tendency to uh, get internal, uh, get into that uh, belief system that this person has a power and I should respect this. This is uh, next to God to me because I'm eating because of him. Or so. Mm -hmm. How, uh, so is there something, uh, that is handled at that aspect or uh, how do we do that yeah so when augusto boal uh, you know uh, kind of created theater of the oppressed and its pedagogy he was in jail <laughs> and because he was exiled from his own country and he was so angry at everything so in in the in the beginning years in the beginning decades of theater of the oppressed uh, the oppressed, uh, the oppressor was uh, again demonized, and even when you imagine you're oppressed, the person who has oppressed you, you look at them and you imagine them as a demon, or not as human, or as as horrible human beings, or somebody who has who's very bad. But as as uh, as he kept working, and his son specifically. Julian Boal, as Julian Boal kept traveling to America and Europe, and they realized that there isn't clear oppression, but there is there are subtleties. Now it has gotten into the subtleties of oppression, and how do we tackle them? Then only he designed the Rainbow of Desire and Cop in the Head. So Cop in the Head is the two cops in our heads talking about the same thing, like that's that's when he said that all of us are oppressed and oppressors and we keep switching between the roles and we have two cops in the head and we have various desires related to the same thing like if for example just very just a small example that i want to get i want to be fit and i want to work out but i don't want to work out i want to get up early in the morning but i don't want to get up early in the morning i want to sleep more and i want to have rest and i want to uh, scroll on social media in the night but i also want to stay fit so these are just different desires that i have so how do we understand which one is the dominant one and how do i how do i understand which one is driving my actions just a simple example so he so these days, rainbow of desire, the cop in the head are uh, being used to work uh, on the internalized uh, part of the uh, process, internalized and interpersonal part of the process, which obviously covers the ideological part of it because we have internalized something because we believe in some ideology that is being 
uh, implemented by an institution. I mean, it, it goes without saying, but yes. So yeah, I'm not saying that these days there, uh, there, uh, there isn't a clear oppression happening anywhere, but I'm just seeing that the subtleties have increased. So the, the, the different kind of tools were uh, used. In, in, in Augusto Boal's Forum Theater, people would show the oppression actually happening. But in Julian Boal's, he says, show the moment after the oppression. Don't show the oppression. You don't need to show the oppression. Everybody knows that this happened. You show what happens after the oppression, how the protagonist is trying to find the solution and trying to fight it. So things have changed now. Even the techniques are more about the subtleties of human mind and desires and how we live in contradictions. All of us, the, the world exists because of contradictions. So these, these techniques also try to work with them. Thanks, thanks, Manjana. And how do we learn more about this <laughs> or applying I mean, it? Uh, I mean, you can have my email ID, and I will just share some the uh, some uh, reading material about theater of the oppressed, some activity books that I have about it. So yes, you can have my email ID. Please write to me if you want and I will share more about it. There's a lot on the internet, but I can also provide you what I have learned from the past five, six years. And I actually I waited. Sorry. <laughs> I, I waited for your session uh, for almost three months. Yeah. Remember? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is this is our uh, organization, Rangkarwa, and we recently did uh, try to digitalize Forum Theater. Not really, but the, we did a project that was inspired by Forum Theater. So what we did, we worked. Uh, uh, we were trying to navigate uh, what happens when the boundaries of personal and professionals are blurred in a working space, and. A, a woman is facing sexual harassment and they don't really know how to how to uh, work around it they're still navigating how to tackle sexual harassment when it's happening in a workspace in in an informal way and when the boundaries of personal and professionals are blurring especially all of us experience this during the pandemic so how do we how do we navigate this so uh, there was a project called unmuted and what we did was we created one video where the actual uh, the harassment is happening. And then we picked a few spectators. Again, uh, Joe, these were people who have faced sexual harassment online or know somebody or work with these women. So the, uh, we, have, we had 112 spectators. So we forwarded them the video and there was a survey attached to it. They responded. And then based on that survey, we designed the next scene. And then we again... Uh, sent it to them and then again a survey was attached and that is why we that is how we tried to digitalize forum theater and it was an experience uh, very a very uh, interesting experiment it's there on our website so unmuted so you can check it out and uh, we also have a blog about it that actually talks a lot about the process and how did we uh, you know uh, create the characters and how did we digitalize the whole forum theater, which basically my mentors don't agree with. They were like, it was not forum theater, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Any, any thoughts, any questions, please shoot. I'm here. Yes, so again, I think I'll uh, ask this one. Okay, um, we might not have talked about this uh, with the context of the education system that we have, but Vandana, what are your thoughts on the kind of oppression, uh, uh, like the kind of oppression that these students at the youth of the current times go through, you know, uh, especially in the schools, the universities, 
and the academic system that we have currently and if you have any experience of using to with uh, like such people and yeah uh, i i'm sure that like there is a uh, significant operation that is happening there and i think that is very subtle right and uh, i think we, the the operation that we have been talking comes from uh, like in this session right comes from somebody who is very close to you but when you talk about let's say teachers right or the people who are creating these uh, syllabus and the uh, what happens in your school so i think that is very difficult to actually identify that who is the person or who, who is being the oppressor here so how does it work in that context it's it's basically institutional and uh, yeah uh we haven't used theater of the oppressed per se for this but we are using process drama so uh, uh here in in this village we are using second language learning through process drama so basically we're teaching them english but we're uh, using process drama to create this world where all of the i'm, I'm doing this with youth above 18 in 1920 and uh, these people have created characters of teachers so they work in a school that's their world and then they are trying to explore uh, the different parts of education and system and uh, they are exploring what exactly holistic education means and we are also uh, talking about different things we are reading toto chan and then we are exploring what exactly education means and what are we getting we have watched unschooling the world <laughs> and uh, yeah we are trying to explore uh, the the idea of education through process drama they are learning english the idea is uh, they they came here because they wanted to learn english but i wanted to give them much more than that so we are exploring the whole idea of education what how education is influenced by different parts of our society and our lives and what it actually influences in our lives so connecting all these uh, dots we are mapping it and we are exploring it with characters as teachers so they explore as teachers they explore their relationship with principal the staff and they understand how a system works the idea of system thinking that nobody is to blame because everybody is to blame <laughs> so they are also exploring that but yeah That's super, super, super interesting. Just want to say thank you for sharing that. I'd love to email you about all that later more. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you, everybody, for for joining. I mean, it was amazing working with all of you. It was amazing. Uh, I think it had everything. <laughs> it was a playful, fun, <laughs> and insightful. I think. uh these three hours uh it, you were very engaging thanks padmana i wish it was physical i'm telling you guys this is i mean i am not satisfied because it's virtual i wish it was physical you won't imagine the amount of interest it can create if it was uh physical we would have had so much done and so much fun and so so many conversations and dialogue why is it virtual okay <laughs> that's just my agony as a facilitator working online <laughs> yes uh, so thank you so much everyone uh, i have just linked a feedback form in the chat also so please uh, do take out a couple of minutes and fill that form up it will be extremely helpful uh, uh, to allow us to understand and improve the experience in the uh, next conference maybe yeah and also i have one prompt for all of us for our last picture uh, we uh, yes please everybody switch on your videos so the prompt is uh, patrick you have a question or something yes but i can say after the photo no problem okay <laughs> <laughs> so the prompt is how are you feeling right now you have to put it in an image and then uh, anip can you do that can you click a screenshot for all of us okay so how are you feeling right now after 3 hours of constant blabbering of vandana 
थ्री टू वन Are we clicking? Did we click? Yes, yes, I'm done. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. It was so nice. Yes, Patrick, your question. Uh, it's not a question. I'm just like observing all of it. Uh, it really got me in a lot of places, and I also would like to thank you for your facilitation, your energy, your the way you talk, the the speed you talk. It was like very. Uh, it was I was very inside what you were. Conducing, so I'm really appreciating having this time with all you guys. It was it was really awesome. Thanks for uh, holding this space. It was yeah. a really amazing uh, learning and, and, and experience. And yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Oh, okay. Uh, can we, if can there we is anybody, yes. Can we just check out saying one word, anything, anything that you want to share? Everybody has to say. Just check out by saying one word, anything that you want to share, and say. Yes, I'll I'll give you the screenshot, object thingy. Definitely. Wonderful most session. Um, I'm very, <clears throat> I'm very heartened, um, and so glad that I made the decision to uh, log on, even though I was an hour late. <laughs> it's well worth the time. Thank you. I'll say overlapping circles. Peace and gratitude. Satisfying. Means spaciousness. I would say experience. Yeah, I was a bit hesitate to join because I don't really have a theater background or anything. I was like, oh, I'm not going to join it, and I'm going to join another session. After that, I will give it a try. <laughs> okay, so this it was being a wonderful experience. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Okay. So. Uh... We have Anil also who has joined us so towards the end of the session. So welcome, Anil. Uh, we were glad to have uh, you join us and share your wonderful energy with us. Although it was towards the end of the session, but I'm sure we all uh, benefited uh, from your presence, right? And we are grateful to have you with us. Yes. So, and I think I'll, uh, the word that I would like to say will be transformation. You know, I think uh, it was... It had been a long time since I had thought about the kind of memories that uh, you asked us to revisit. So I think that is extremely helpful to get in touch with these places uh, from time to time, right? And it just helps a lot in uh, uh, trying to anticipate, right? As somebody mentioned, what is going to happen and what could happen uh, in the days to come. Yes. So uh, I believe we could conclude, right? If there is anybody uh, who would like to share any final words. I think Matty is left. Yes, hey Matty, yes, please go on. <laughs> I 
I think my word is energy or synergy. This better be good, Matty. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. We will all go back and reflect on it. So. Oh, yes. Huh. Okay. So thank okay. you so much, everyone. Okay, we thank will you see so much. You. Yeah. Yes. We will see you all uh, in this universe of Zoom rooms somewhere. Right? <laughs> there is a okay. lot of uh, Yes, there are a lot of things still happening. So do make sure that you check out the uh, schedule you all have access to, right? And... Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you so much for joining. Uh, it was a pleasure hosting you. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Ciao. Good morning. Have a nice day, night.